Folks, this is not a reaction video, okay? This is not, old man listens to Taylor Swift for the first time. Okay, no. This is a music channel. I review albums, and I am reviewing the brand new Taylor Swift album, The Tortured Poets Department. The entire thing, the anthology. It's me, your buddy Dave from the darkstuff.com and from the Dark Stuff channel here on YouTube. Thanks a lot for checking out my latest video. And yeah, I'm going to review the new Taylor Swift album. Now, I want to go completely on the record here, okay? I'm not a, a Swifty, as it were, but I'm also not a hater either, okay? I'm pretty neutral on the music of Taylor Swift. At this point in my life, Taylor Swift is more a part of pop culture than necessarily a part of my music listening. You can see in the background uh, records and CDs and they go into the back room back there. Let me show you my Taylor Swift collection. This is it. Taylor Swift 1989, the CD of the original version, not Taylor's version, not by choice, it's just the, this is one that was out at the time. And it comes with these photos inside which are sort of like meant to look like polaroids but they're not actually polaroids i mean they're they're reproductions and stuff like that most of the stuff that i cover on this channel is yeah like a lot of like newer indie rock new indie music etc or i do a lot of stuff about like older hair metal and stuff and and 90s music because that was like my era when i was young now just because i'm 53 and i'm technically old enough to be taylor's dad does not mean that i'm not allowed to have an opinion on Taylor Swift's music. She's a woman in her 30s and has been making music for more than 20 years. I kind of feel like just to, to say her music is only for like 12 year old girls is like absolutely ridiculous. Those stadiums are packed with tons of people from all across the, the, the spectrum of all kinds of, you know, ethnicities and races and genders and whatever and it's like it does seem to be borderline universal that if you're below the age of 40 you kind of like Taylor Swift. The reason why I bought that Taylor Swift 1989 album was because of this. Okay, this is Ryan Adams doing 1989. Okay, he did this back in uh, back in 2015. It's a song for song reproduction of the album just done Ryan Adams way and I used to be a Ryan Adams fan I'm not so much anymore I kind of felt like his music was getting a little samey and then it turns out he's kind of a d-bag and whatever but we're not here to discuss that but I bought that Ryan Adams album and I was listening to it and you know you're hearing songs like welcome to New York and style and these kinds of things done his way and I was like, these are pretty good songs, you know? I mean, I'd heard Shake It Off on, on the radio or whatever, so I was familiar with that, and I thought that sounded a little gimmicky, so I wasn't really on board. But some of these other ones, like I Wish You Would and How You Get the Girl and, and Blank Space and stuff, they seemed pretty good. And then I felt like, well, it's pretty foolish of me to own a Ryan Adams album doing this entire Taylor Swift record and never having heard the Taylor Swift record. And uh, so that's when, I, that's when I bought it. I've been in the radio business for almost 20 years. I host a show here in the Omaha, Nebraska metro area. It does stream worldwide, but whatever. Um, called New Day Rising. And it's mostly about new indie music. But the way they distribute new music nowadays in the radio game is they send it out uh, online. You have to log into a website and download the tracks. Most labels don't send out CDs anymore. It's just not... It's just too cost prohibitive, right? When you log into these sites, there's always tons of stuff that's maybe not relevant for your particular show. It doesn't cover, st you know, but I always like to experiment and download albums whether or not I think it's going to be good for the show just because I'm, I'm interested in checking them out. So that's the situation with the Taylor Swift album. I logged on a couple days ago and saw that it was there. Oh, wow. The Tortured Poets Department, the anthology. Download. Let me also say, at the risk of sounding dumb, that I did not realize there were two versions of the album. Okay, so there's the Tortured Poets Department, and then there's the Tortured Poets Department, the anthology, which is double the length of songs, right? So the anthology is 31 songs, and it's over two hours of music. I thought that was the album, so that's what I listened to, and that's what we're going to talk about. So a little shout-out to Miriam from the band uh, Space Moth. 
who is also a producer, and she is credited as engineering four different songs on this Taylor Swift record. So kudos to her. That is really cool. Space Moth, Space Moth is an awesome band in their own right. But um, that's a nice bonus getting to be uh, recording on a, on a Taylor Swift record. So let me just sum up initially my thoughts on this record, and that is this is not at all what I was expecting. Okay? I don't know what I was expecting, really, other than... I expect that with my casual hearing of of what passes for popular music nowadays, I, it just seems very dancey, very superficial. It doesn't seem very oriented on a songwriter. It seems more oriented on producers and beats and tracks and this kind of thing. I knew Taylor Swift wasn't exactly in that realm. And what I have heard before, you know, kind of informed that view. But really, the sounds on this record were very different than what I was expecting. It starts off and it's almost like it's got an 80s synth vibe. I mean, the whole album has a very melancholy feel. Okay, so this is not shake it off party rock or whatever, party pop. This is seems very, very um, melancholy to me. Now, I don't know much about Taylor Swift's life. I don't know her ups and downs on her personal life. I don't know who she dates. I know she's going out with a guy from the Kansas City Chiefs now, but that's only because I do follow football and you know she would go to the games and they would automatically show her on TV. So that's how I know that she goes out with a guy from the Kansas City Chiefs, okay? But as far as anyone she dated prior to that, I have no effing idea and I totally don't care. So who specifically songs might be about is not what I'm going to be discussing. I don't know and I don't care and I don't think it's relevant. I actually think that artists shouldn't tell people who specifically they're writing songs about. I think Taylor Swift doesn't spell it out specifically either for this reason because it can taint your view of something right like the best example of this ever is a song by Husker Du okay great band from the 80s and they have a song on their Flip Your Wig album called Green Eyes beautiful song it's like hey green eyes dun, dun, dun. okay I'm not gonna sing it anyways it's a lovely song and it's great and uh, I, you always wonder like who he's writing it about you know and and then there's the lore of him which is like oh he, he was bisexual and he was dating a woman and a man at the same time and was it about the guy was it about the girl Grant Hart tells it it's about his cat it's about his cat now, that's cool I'm a cat guy okay but if you thought this was this beautiful love song about, you know, your, your, your significant other and their green eyes and whatever, and then you find out it's about a cat, it could maybe taint your view of this song. And I think that's what goes on with this Taylor Swift stuff with me, because I don't want to know who she's friends with. I don't want to know who she dates. It doesn't make any difference to me, okay? She's not going to be dating me, so what difference does it fucking make, right? So the first song is called Fortnite. It is a, it's a pretty cool song. I like it. It's got that 80s synth vibe. It's pretty subdued. It does feature Post Malone, so he does something on there. Um, I'm not that familiar with Post Malone, only I know him as the guy with the tattoos all over his face. Um, that's my the extent of it. He does some backup vocals. It's a pretty cool song. I like that one. The next song uh, starts off, it's called The Tortured Poets Department. It's the title track of the album, and it's got this very 80s drum beat that reminded me of something, and I was like, it was driving me crazy. Where did I hear this exact drum sound? Well, it turns out I heard it on Prince's album Sign of the Times, and that song, It, and the two drum intros are, are pretty similar. She's got a cool line in the song where she says something like, um, you know, you're not Dylan Thomas, I'm not Patti Smith, save the Chelsea Hotel for modern idiots. And I'm like, okay, that's a cool line. Referencing Patti Smith, Patti Smith herself said she thought that was cool, she was honored by it. They didn't ask Dylan Thomas, he's been dead for a long time. So, you know, I was looking for that sort of gimmicky type of song, like a shake it off type of song that was just designed to appeal to kids and the radio. The songs come off much more like well-constructed, sophisticated pop songs. Again, I'm not focusing on the lyrics. Sometimes there'll be a cool line that will catch my ear and I will point it out here in the review, but ultimately I'm not here to analyze lyrics. A lot of the songs are very, you know, they're about romance and they're, they're you know, um, about relationship stuff, relationshipy stuff. And you know what? 90% of rock, pop, R&B, rap, that's what it's about, okay? <laughs> it's it's just a fact. That's what people write about. It's a huge subject in, in everyone's uh, lives. So until like the seventh song, which is called Fresh Out the Slammer, 
you don't hear that much guitar like it's almost like it's very very synth and keyboard oriented and I have to imagine that was kind of a conscious choice but it does veer off from it from about the seventh track when it gets to fresh out the slammer and this really is what I thought Taylor Swift sounded like like before hearing this record this is the quintessential this is what I think she sounds like so from this point for a little while it starts to feel a little bit samey and you get into some of these songs like uh, Florida, um, Guilty as Sin, I Can Fix Him, No, I Really Can. And you start hearing, like, I start noticing the length for the first time, okay? This is 31 songs and two hours of music. That's a lot for anyone. That's like Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, okay? It's a lot of music to absorb. But I did kind of perk up when I heard the song, Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? And I, I, I did that because I thought she would maybe lyrically kind of deal with the idea that she became um, like attacked for her political beliefs and that for the first time she became a symbol of something that a lot of people on the right saw her as, oh, how dare you have an opinion? How dare you? Uh, stand up for women's rights or for, you know, whatever. Any kind of issue that she stood up for, she endorsed uh, Joe Biden in 2020 and stuff. So she became a little bit of a target for some people. And, of course, just haters generally would knock her for being at football games. It's like, I'm sorry, if I were a football player and I had a famous girlfriend, I'd want her at the show at the game, you know, every week too. Why not? Why? Why is that so weird? I never, I never understood this anger of like Taylor Swift's at the game. It's like okay, but these directors who are directing where the cameras go, it's not the, it's not the team, it's not the, the players, it's not Taylor Swift herself. It's somebody who thinks they're going to get more attention if they put the camera on her. It's not her fault. I thought this was what she was going to go for lyrically to say, who's afraid of little old me? You know, like, you should be. That's what she says in the song. It's got this huge chorus and the absolute best line on the entire album where she says, I put narcotics into all of my songs and that's why you're still singing along. What? I'm sorry. I don't care who you are. I don't care what artist you, you think you like. That is a good line comparable to anybody. That's fucking great. Okay, next couple of songs, again, kind of blend in together. They're sort of sounding very samey. We get to The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived, which is track 14 on the, on the album. And, you know, it's a great title. Okay, great title. But the, the tune is just eh. And the next song, The Alchemy, is almost sounds like like the same song almost so again this is where i'm starting to lose it and i'm like very consciously aware that this is a long album and i'm like where's the cynthia stuff from the beginning of the album she's got a cool song called clara bow which references an old silent film actress the actress clara bow and she's sort of comparing her to herself or sort of just saying i, I guess what she kind of could have been there's a cool line where she says you look like stevie nicks in 75 and i think she meant Clara Bow, but she also could have meant Taylor Swift. I don't know. Stevie Nicks in 75. Pretty amazing. So we got a couple of, of good titles. I mean, I like I Look in People's Windows. Uh, that's a good title. Um, I Hate It Here. Stuff like that. But then you also have Cassandra, Peter, Robin. Those are all three separate songs, people's names. Um, and, and I guess it does sort of drift till the end. Now, this length issue could be avoided with the single album which would only be like 15 or 16 songs and maybe it wouldn't feel like it dragged overall my favorite songs on the album are Fortnite, uh tortured poets department um i liked uh who's afraid of little old me clara bow how did it end cassandra which was good but then the last four songs again it kind of closes out on some sort of very very quiet ballads so I guess my thoughts are wrapping this up is that yeah the album was not at all what I was expecting better than I was expecting I don't like to give necessarily ratings of out of five stars or ten stars or whatever but for the sake of doing it because I did it with some others let's say if I had to do it on a scale of ten start one to ten and ten being the absolute best one being the absolute worst I'd give it a solid seven 
Okay, and maybe if I knew there was more than one version, and I heard the shorter version, maybe I would have thought a little bit more. But I guess there was too much drift in the middle for me to really lock on. And what I found very intriguing about the beginning of the album with like Fortnite, Tortured Poets Department said the first couple of tunes was that different arrangement style was the more synthy vibe and i and i thought that was really cool all right friends i hope to hear your thoughts on this record if you think it's very weird that i was covering taylor swift just listen to it yourself i mean it's out there streaming it's on youtube or whatever and you know give it an honest listen i'm not saying you're gonna love it i'm not overnight i'm not becoming a swifty or whatever nothing has changed from my view but i feel like you have to be honest about stuff and not use your preconceived notions about an artist to determine whether their thing is going to be good or not um, there's a reason why she is the number one biggest overall artist in the entire world at the moment. And frankly, when we've had other sort of pop stars in this role, people who have been either like, you know, in the modern era, you'd say like maybe Katy Perry or Britney Spears, I certainly think, you know, we're dealing with much different level of talent when you're talking about Taylor Swift. Okay, folks, that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. So, uh, you have a MySpace page or something?